Okay, so I've been filming for like almost an hour and a half So I might be separating this Q&A into two portions that you can watch Throughout this week So definitely subscribe and ring that bell if you want to be notified of when it comes out Okay, so the first question is from my good friend Kat L My partner in crime Her question is It's your birthday month any celebration plans? Any unboxing? Yes, it is my birthday month. At the time of this video going up, my birthday would officially be the next day. I am a summer baby. I love the summer season, which is why you're gonna see a fan behind me because it's super hot lately and hopefully it doesn't affect the video quality because I'm kind of melting right here, but hopefully it's gonna be fine and you guys are not gonna mind it. I'm gonna speak a little louder. But yes, to answer you, Kat, and you already know there will be unboxings this month of course there were things on my wish list some that I was able to get some I'm still waiting so fingers crossed that my birthday month is gonna be my lucky month so if you're new to my channel hi my name is Amy in case you don't know me I am planning some unboxing videos throughout this month actually so I guess after this week and you guys are gonna see what I got my hands on but yeah if you're new to my channel definitely subscribe I would love to have you back and thank you for the question cat next question is by gaze TC would you recommend Picotin 18 for your first Hermes bag? The answer is absolutely a hundred percent this is my Picotin 18 in the touch so you see a little bit of exotic on the handle the rest of it is just black color Clemence I have a rodeo here which is separate you don't get that with the purchase but I definitely recommend this bag as your first purchase this size is a perfect everyday small size bag it's a generous handle so you can definitely do crook of the arm a lot of people have been getting the aftermarket straps to attach to the handles here so that they can wear it as a shoulder bag I'm kind of looking into a few options I actually quite like using bags by the top handles anyway but it is always nice to have an option for the shoulder when you need to be hands-free in general the picotin is a pretty well-priced bag considering that you're getting top-notch quality Hermes craftsmanship quality super good leather this leather Clemence is one of my top favorite if not maybe even my top favorite uh, in terms of durability and everyday use all the bags that I have in this leather Torillon Clemence are my most used everyday bags which just says a lot so I highly recommend this bag especially because it is not a quota bag so it is easier to get I'm not saying that it's easy to get it's just easier to get these days every <laughs> popular bags are hard to get Hermes bags are hard to get in general nowadays unless you go to destination travel such as Paris Hawaii um, just places that are known to have a lot of tourists unless you go to those places chances are at your own local store you're gonna have to have some sort of purchase history to be offered bags these days so it is what it is but at the same time because this bag is not so expensive even if you were to get it in the secondhand market the markup is not going to be so crazy so i definitely highly recommend this bag because i love this bag so much i wanted to get it in a light color but it's not it's not a priority obviously but i would love to get it in a different color um down the road so yeah i love this bag next question is by tiffy taffy toffee <laughs> that's a cute name how is your relationship with your stepdaughter? Will you pass your bags down to her or share? That is a great question. And uh, by the way, I got a lot of questions because uh, I posted on Instagram. Follow me there if you want to ask me questions next time. I posted twice on my stories. I posted on Wednesday and then I posted on Thursday. On Wednesday, I guess everybody was too busy to see the stories. So not that many questions came in on Thursday there were so many so I'll try to get through them quickly but uh, if there are any duplicates I'm just gonna skip them uh, so yes I do have a stepdaughter she turned 16 recently and she's a big girl now but to answer your question about the bags here's the thing um, <laughs> ever since I've known her and I've known her since she was four years old we have total opposite styles I am very girly, I love to dress up, I love wearing actual dresses, if I could I would wear in summer clothes all year round in 
dresses <laughs> for as long as I could remember I have been a girly girl I just love to look pretty and I I love a dressy style in general her on the other hand she's the total opposite she loves wearing pants sweatshirts she loves sneakers in fact she dresses more like her father the stuff and the brands that my husband buys she will often just either take them and wear them or she would just like inherit them because uh, my husband is a sneakerhead brands like off-white essential those fear of god and i kid you not every time especially my mother-in-law she would love more than anything for her to be a slightly more girly girl but every time you ask her to wear a dress or just to wear something a little bit more feminine even color wise just like color pinks and things like that she cringes so much and it's hard to change other people unless they really want to change or they would really want to try things out so i'm not one to force my hobbies and my likes onto someone else and so i'm never gonna force her to like my bags i'm never gonna force her to like dressing up or to love dresses and to love you know flowery patterns and things like that i'm not one to force anybody uh, to be someone else therefore chances are we are not gonna share bags very much i mean i don't know the future but at the moment no also personality wise you know there are people who really just really cherish their things and take care of things whereas she's more of a clumsy type of person i feel like her bedroom is a total mess and so i personally wouldn't really trust her with my designer bags anyway not not right now not at this age maybe when she is more mature and she takes care of her things and she knows the value of money maybe when she starts working uh, and starts earning money maybe things will change but at this moment in terms of responsibility and the level of trust i have for her to handle my bags no no not even my friends can handle my bags in fact unless they're very very careful people and i can trust them 100 percent to do so so yeah that's the answer to your question but it's a great question thank you so much who is pandora 360 which would you like more constance 18 or the chanel rectangular mini flap your question is which one would i like more that's interesting because i think i would like both i don't think i can live without either one of them i don't have a constance 18 yet but i have been trying my friends constance 18s a few times and i adore the bag and i've spoken about the differences between chanel versus hermes and if you haven't seen my video where i talked at length about the two different styles and brands and like whether they're worth the investment and such and i even share some of the problems that i had experienced in both brands yes they both have problems so i'll link it right here it was just my previous video but essentially i think both brands and especially when it comes to these two bags that you asked about both of them do offer their own aesthetic and their own functionality until i get a constance 18 in my life and i can really use and get to know the bag a lot more on a personal level i won't be able to comment so much more but i definitely feel that both the chanel mini and the constance 18 are going to be integral to my collection if that makes sense I definitely see myself getting a constance 18 down the road and um there are styles they're both styles that i want in my collection especially for the chanel mini i favor the one with the top handle next question by coco bell 77 if you are in europe this year london or paris would you do a meet and greet i would love to yes probably the easiest way and the way that i'm gonna at least attempt which is what we did last time uh is to just announce it to the members i think that's what i would do again but um yeah otherwise i don't know how else i would go about announcing it without attracting all the crazies to come as well if that makes sense especially if i'm just organizing it by myself unless i have a company or a brand to organize it with where they can do the vetting of people then i would feel more comfortable doing it you know publicly if that makes sense the next question is by nerf farah hatika sorry if i mispronounce your name going on holiday anytime soon 
I think I think you mean Singapore or Hong Kong. Yes, we have some holidays planned this summer. We are actually going on a cruise to Alaska and it's coming up. So in terms of other destinations, we don't have anything else planned yet. Hong Kong and Singapore, not in the timeline, uh, not in the pipeline right now. And I mentioned this before as well that um, a lot of times we plan vacations kind of very quickly within weeks and then we would just go so at the moment there is nothing else planned other than the cruise but um, we never know you never know because I we tend to just do ad hoc planning and then just go whenever we feel like it but at the very 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 moment there is no plan to go anywhere else okay next question is by Nija xox is the lindy's 26 hard to get as i said earlier any Hermes bags these days are really hard to get even the ones that used to be much easier to get such as the Evelyn's and the picotin lindy 26 i don't know i know that the mini lindy is very very hard to get the 26 i would assume it's slightly easier but I don't want to say that it's easy to get because I've never tried and I don't plan on getting a Lindy 26 but just because it's hard or easy or whatever doesn't mean that you should not try because if it's one of your wishlist bag and you want it then speak to your essay and eventually when they have one and it's your turn and it's meant to be then you shall get one, right? So always try. Next question, Alexandra, Elena, Christia, if you were to lose all of your bag collection and could only buy one bag, which one would you choose? Why? <laughs> Why these very extreme scenario? Um, I have no idea. Let's just talk about it. Hypothetically, if I were to like have no bags and just like get one only, do you go for something practical or do you go for something nice and dressy because chances are if you're gonna need to go on certain events you're gonna need a nice bag so would you rather just invest in that nice bag that you will use more seldomly or would you rather get a more practical bag that you get more use out of but it's just a more casual style so that is sort of the debate if i had to make an educated guess based on my experience so far i would say that i would probably go for the smaller size bag that is slightly dressy that can still be used every day and also on a kind of event occasion so think mini rectangular with top handle or kelly mini those kinds of styles you know day to night bag it is small of course but it is still good enough as a casual everyday bag that you can go shopping with obviously you have to downsize but it is also nice enough that you can take it to weddings and night functions and parties and so if i could only have one bag it would probably be something like this and the equivalent version of this in Hermes would be a mini Kelly so um, it's it boils down to whichever one I can get my hands on at that time because this is impossible to get now because they don't make caviar rectangular minis anymore and mini Kelly's are just extremely hard to get as well so um, I never wish to be in that scenario ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Next question by Sharon Loy Wong. Hi, Amy. Do you know if a mini Constance in uh, Vancouver is a quota bag? Yes, it is. I asked, and unfortunately, it is a quota bag here, which is why I think a lot of people locally here would rather just do their pre spend and get Birkins and and Kelly's every year <laughs> instead of a Constance and would try to maybe get the Constance via a secondhand market or just when they're traveling and try their chances so unfortunately yes it is a quota bag here Katie1290 isn't Hermes gold color always with contrast stitching I think you asked this question last week already and the answer is no it's not always contrast stitching but most of them are and it depends on the leather apparently and i didn't know this but one of you shared that depending on the different leathers sometimes they are not necessarily contrast stitching but most of the time i would say it is shalia 
Which monogram Speedy 20 strap will you prefer? I ordered the black one but not sure if I'll regret or not. I think because the Speedy 20 is a crossbody bag and you would want to have the option to wear it crossbody even though you can do top handle of course but I see it as more of like an everyday very functional style very like travel friendly type of size and bag I would rather have a strap that is less prone to getting dirty so black which I think you mean the one that has the black trim right uh, I would I would think that that's the good one I I would have chosen that same one as well Ordinary uh, What's the one luxury thing you love but hubby is not a fan of? Interesting, I don't know because I never care if he doesn't like something or not He doesn't like it when I wear things that are quote unquote too revealing <laughs> and and it's not even that revealing because I'm not someone who likes to reveal a lot it's Sometimes some dressier outfits or dressier dresses can be a, a bit v-neck and it's a bit low Or maybe sometimes um, there's there are fabrics that are slightly see-through you, you get the gist, <laughs> basically um, Is he more conservative? Maybe a little bit I guess over the years he's not gotten used to but like he's he has gotten used to and also I um, would get quite upset if someone is um, trying to decide what I should or should not wear just like how I said about me not wanting to change someone else's style because that's just how they are their identity their personality like I wouldn't want someone else to change mine either so yeah it's just a bit of compromising and just getting used to each other over the long term Stella KP if Chanel quality wasn't as bad as it is and you still had your essay do you think you would be buying more yes absolutely Stella I uh, have been wanting to buy a few things despite the quality and it's been impossible because first of all I don't have an essay now and second of all they have been experiencing more quality issues but it's not even that necessarily that is deterring me it's, it's the fact that I don't have an essay and can't get a hold of anything and also the fact that a lot of styles are kind of repeating themselves and I do have all the classic styles in a way so unless it's something very different that I don't have already I don't really need to buy it so it's a combination of everything but absolutely if I did still have an essay I would still be shopping quite a bit at, at Chanel because I I love it I love Chanel now to what is your favorite Hermes footwear well my favorite footwear happens to be their sandals and their loafers so this sandal which is called the sheep sandals and I just happen to be holding the white one um, but this sandal is my favorite one of my favorite uh, footwear because it's slip and go now I did do a whole video describing the issues with the sheep sandals and how I solved it so I will link it up here because unless I did those steps to make it wearable it actually is very very abrasive let's just put it this way so um, other than that and because I found a way to work around it it is my favorite footwear and like I said earlier I'm a summer baby so if I could be in summer clothing and summer footwear all year round I would uh, and in fact my favorite version uh, of the sandal is the suede version these ones these ones are the um, suede one in the color beige argyle so this one is literally my most favorite one I wear it the most in terms of my favorite loafers this style which is the royal loafers are my most favorite but be careful about the royal loafers because there is a version that has like the um, I guess you can say piping like they have like the edge piping with the different glaze color and those ones apparently are not the same and they are irritating so I would just buy the classic version which is the one color version and I know you didn't ask but I've talked about it many many times before my least favorite good loafer is the Colette loafer so this one 
is my least favorite because it hurts me so much and I've explained it before it's just the shape of my toes and everything you can see this one has a very very thin toe box so it's constantly pinching my toes whereas this one has a very generous toe box and it is also a longer footwear a lot of people love the Colette my friend Clara loves loves love loves the Colette but I can't and she doesn't actually like the royal loafer which is the one that I mentioned earlier with the edge glazing with the different um, contrasts and especially with Hermes they make their shoes for a certain type of feet and so if your feet doesn't fit that particular type of mold it will not be comfortable to you so I've never been able to buy Oran sandals they are so wide and like ridiculously unwearable for me even the oasis i tried both of them they're so wide they just fly off my feet i can't wear them whereas these which has a longer more narrow profile works wonders on my feet which just goes to show like i said earlier uh, unless you have the exact feet that these shoes are molded for it's very hard for you to like all of them across the board next question ping u48 which almas loafers are the most comfortable and worth buying i mentioned that as well it's the royal loafers and i showed it to you guys already why and on the other hand what i don't like is the colette loafers but you could be exactly the opposite of me because it depends on your feet shape i have slightly narrower feet but i also have the egyptian style toes big toe is the longest and then the subsequent toes get shorter and shorter and shorter so this is my feet style and i find that the royal loafers or the paris loafers work the best for me next question by airy wikas love your videos what is the most functional and easy to use quota bag um it's either a Birkin or Kelly, right? I would say the Birkin is probably the most easy and functional in terms of being able to just reach in and out because it's an open tote. With the Kelly, what I like about it is that if you don't need to reach in your bag often, but you just like to be carrying a bougie bag and you just need your stuff in case you need to reach in, then I like the Kelly in those instances because you can wear it on the crook of your arm and also on your shoulders. So they're both practical in different ways, but I would say it just depends on your lifestyle. Are you someone who needs to reach into your bag quickly and often then the Birkin is the answer the Kelly is more just to you know kind of style your outfit and just have your things with you but you don't really need to reach in your bag that often Roy Melendez how do you feel about the common misconception that gifting to a Luxie has to be a luxury item hmm I don't know about this misconception actually um, but it would be sad if if that's you know like i guess the expectations behind that just because you like luxury that anytime you give someone anything especially to another luxie that it has to be a luxury item i think that's kind of sad because gifting should come from your heart and it should be meaningful gifting should be what you think the other person likes not just because they expect you. you you know what i mean it's like it's convoluted it shouldn't be the other way around right so like if i'm gifting someone something even if that person is a luxie so someone that enjoys luxury but it has to be meaningful to them so if they happen to like a certain things that they're known for right then it doesn't have to be luxury to be meaningful but it can be luxury obviously it's just it just depends i guess and that's always something that i've kind of i guess voice within my closest people uh that i don't agree for example christmas time right like what is the point of expecting something back and be upset if you don't get it and unless you get gifted something that you wouldn't want to gift it back because it's sort of like an exchange right like i get that to receive gifts is a nice thing but it doesn't mean that you should be expecting them like if you're truly wanting to give someone something it should come from 
your heart and your generosity and your thoughtfulness, right? So it it shouldn't mean that you are expecting back that same thing. And that is something that I've always struggled with because like it no longer is meaningful to give things. And you might as well just buy it yourself and not have to expect and be disappointed by anybody else because you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it should just really come from the heart and, and that you have absolutely no expectations because otherwise, just tell your friend or whoever you're, you know, having this issue with that instead of gifting each other things to not they do something else like just hang out eat or whatever and instead if you want to just get a gift get get it for yourself because you know exactly what you want and you will never get disappointed amazing question and um you know in a way i get to share what i've always thought that gifting is sort of like such a shallow thing sometimes especially with people that um just are anyway anyway <laughs> next question Life Fala D Doctor, do you have purse peace now? Absolutely not. I mean, if you know my wish list, uh, it's never ending. It's always updating. But does it not mean that I'm not happy with my bags? No, I'm still happy with what I have. Very, very grateful. But I always am wishing for more things. And if you guys know me, you know my next wish list. <laughs> Steph Louie, thoughts on clothing from Tom Brown? I don't know Tom Brown, so let me just look it up quickly. Tom Brown, relocating from Pennsylvania to New York City in 1997. He worked in Giorgio Armani showroom, creative department of Club Monaco before launching his label in 2001. Believing that modern ubiquity of casual dress lends the wearing of suits a submersive edge, Brown established impeccably, impeccably tailored suits in traditional wools and flannels as his signature specialty. Initially shocking to the fashion world, his designs have placed him at the vanguard of directional formal wear. Applying a similar approach, the label's fragrance collection features time-honored warm scents like whiskey alongside sharp florals and citrus notes providing soft softness and vigor though drawing inspiration from classic american style tom brown brings a refreshing contemporary refinement to his label growing range of ready to wear accessories and fragrances you can tell that you know it has a signature it's like totally recognizable i like it it's quite nice i think you know what, I think my husband would like this style. It's sort of like that very unisex style that is clean. Karin from Montreal, what is the best insert for Hermes bags? Quality versus price, honest opinion. Two top or predominant uh, inserts that I am so aware of for Hermes bags out there are Samorga and 7 Rue Paradis, 7RP. Those two are probably the most worn for Hermes bags for myself. And not just because I work with Samorga often, I prefer Samorga. And like your question asks, quality versus price, right? So the quality of 7RP is fantastic. So supreme, so premium. I have no complaints about it. I have never seen one, but I've seen enough videos and talked to enough friends that I know that it's so nice. It's so plush, very well done. It's customized and it's just premium quality. I know that. Uh, but it also comes at a price, which is a pretty steep price for what they are. They are inserts. They're supposed to do something to your bag, right? So other than protecting the inside it's supposed to also give it a structure which samorga also provides now why i love samorga so much is that they're affordable they still provide all the qualities i mentioned earlier so in terms of structure in terms of protecting your bag it provides all of that and because it's affordable I don't have to baby even the insert myself like i want to be able to just throw things in my bag and not have to worry about ruining the insert because if the insert is so expensive and yes you, sh you should be using your things but like my personality is that i'm always careful i've always 
even as a kid with my toys, anything that I really, really cherish, I always took care of them. I want them to stay pristine. That's just part of my personality. So even if it's the insert which is meant to be used and get dirtied, I would still want it to stay in pretty in relatively good shape. So I would feel so much more stressful to do that with 7RP just because I paid so much money for it if I had it, right? So um, so if you ask me, right, honestly speaking, quality versus the, you know, the value, Samorga, hands down Samorga. I mean, I've bought Samorga out of my own pocket money for a long time. And, you know, before I work with them, I've always liked their product. And now I work with them and that, that's even better because I just love working for brands that are truly brands that I truly love and that I truly believe in. Does that mean that I will never try a 7RP insert down the road? Obviously no. I, Like I said, I love both. I think they both are great in their own way. And it just depends on how you look at it, right? Like if you want the most premium of premium material and you really just don't like felt because felt to you maybe means nothing then go for 7RP but it's just for me and the way I see what they're supposed to function Samorga is more than enough so that's my two cents <laughs> that is it for today's q and I hope that you guys enjoyed it it was a super long one it turned out to be an hour and a half over an hour and a half of filming so i will be cutting it in half if you want to see the second half of this q a which i will try to quickly edit it and have it up the next couple days or the next day then stay tuned oh and stay tuned for unboxings throughout this month um probably starting next week i just gotta pick up my filming because honestly it's been so hard to film in this hot condition so um i'll yeah i'll make sure to put in some effort to do those unboxings for you guys because i've just been delaying it and delaying it and i just ugh, just feel like i yeah I need to do it. Anyway, I'll share for sure. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time or in the comment section. Bye guys.